Hello and very good morning. So welcome to week six of our lecture on uh, electrical drive system. So we are in week six. We are going to discuss about uh, the second part, second section of topic number three on DC machines. So today we're going to discuss about the steady state. We are still in steady state, but steady state, uh, what we have seen last week was steady state uh, with the machine uh, without any load, no load steady state. So uh, this week we're going to discuss about a steady state when the machine is loaded. And then uh, after that, we also uh, will discuss a bit on uh, the DC machine when it is in transient state. So transient state means that you will have either uh, variation in terms of the load torque or variation of uh, probably your the supply voltage that you're supplying to the, to the armature. So let's uh, begin. Steady state loaded. So last week, what we have discussed is about steady state when we don't have any load. So basically, the only load that we would uh, be able to observe was the load due to the uh, friction of the shaft, for example, with the bearing. And sometimes it can be neglected. So we say that there is no, uh, there is no, uh, no current. Uh, the current that's circulating inside our uh, armature circuit is close to zero. So what we can say is that if if we look at the equation here, if the current is considered to be zero, then you would have the voltage supply will be uh, more or less equals to uh, very close to the back EMF. And as we know that we have the equation, the relation between back EMF and the speed, which is the coefficient of uh, back EMF or the uh, coefficient of back EMF constant or speed constant. Therefore, we can conclude that the speed is proportional to the uh, armature voltage and the back EMF. So without no load, uh, the speed is directly proportional to the armature voltage and uh, the back EMF. So if you increase the armature voltage, therefore you also increase the back EMF in the same uh, way. Therefore, uh, what we would observe is basically the increase of speed uh, in the way that is uh, continuous. Okay. Uh, but what happens when the machine is loaded? So when the machine is loaded, our term IR is not uh, negligible anymore. So there will be a, some current that is due to the uh, top load, right? So uh, V, uh, our supply voltage into the armature, it will not become equal to the uh, back EMF. So the motor, what we will see is that there will be difference between V and E, and the difference is due to basically the current that is circulating inside our circuit. So if we have load, what we will observe uh, in terms of the armature current is that we will see that the motor is drawing current. So uh, that is what you will observe uh, continuously. If you put more load, if the load is higher, then the current will also be higher. So that is basically explained uh, by the second equation that we have seen last week. The second equation, the relation between the current and the current and top. So we have the same coefficient K that relates between current and top. So uh, the IR component uh, due to the winding resistance cannot be neglected because uh, there is a current, I multiplied by R is not ne neglect, uh, negligible. Therefore, the whole equation need to be taken into, uh, need to be taken completely. But of course, you might be wondering, there is a, another portion of the equation, right? Which is the voltage uh, across the inductor of the amateur winding, LDI over DT. Because we are still in a steady state, Therefore, there is no, there are no variation of, uh, variation of di over dt. So we can neglect that. We are only, we only have v equals to e plus ir. So let's have a look at the characteristic of the load top. So uh, what do we mean by load? Uh, first, uh, first of all, is that load. When, 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 when I say load, it actually means uh, that your shaft is connected to something that is resisting to the movement of your, uh, of your motor shaft. So, for example, if you connect uh, your shaft or the shaft of your motor to a fan blade, then the fan blade that needs to rotate and move the air have a certain resistance. Therefore, uh, the, it will be uh, producing a certain resistive torque toward your shaft. So that's what we call as load or load torque. So, in terms of uh, load, usually uh, we uh, we don't have a lot of torque that is uh, constant across a uh, speed. Usually the talk, the, uh, the load talk or the load that we have in our usual application are not constant. So for example, as I mentioned just now, a fan. Uh, in a fan, the talk that is necess necessary to rotate the fan at a constant speed. So let's say you want to rotate uh, 
uh, your blade, the blade of your fan, let's say, at uh, 500 RPM. The force that is necessary to rotate your blade at that speed basically varies with the square of the speed. So, uh, at the lower speed, so this is the graph that is explaining basically uh, the variation which is more or less quadratic that is proportional to the, the square of the speed. As the speed increase, uh, the load or the resistive top of the fan of the blade increase. So, if you want to rotate uh, the blade at a higher speed, then you need you need more uh, a higher top, right? So, uh, when we want to uh, basically pair a machine to a load, it is necessary to identify the top profile or the top characteristic of the of the application. So, for example, this curve over here is basically the load uh, characteristic or the top. Uh, speed characteristic of a fan, uh, of a blade of a fan. So, how do we uh, then uh, decide or not decide, how do we then know at which speed our motor will rotate if it is um, in, in steady state, if it is it has the task to rotate that, that uh, a fan blade. So, what we do is basically we uh, superpose the two curve of the load characteristic and our motor characteristic. So the characteristic is basically a characteristic of top versus speed, right? So you have uh, over here is the characteristic of the motor. Uh, generally, the, we will see later the characteristic of the motor will look more or less like this. So we have uh, more or less constant uh, speed, uh, constant top at a certain uh, base speed area, called as base speed area. And then after a certain moment, the, the, the speed will basically uh, drop uh, at, at a certain uh, level of speed, uh, uh, the top will drop. I'm sorry, the top will drop at a certain level of speed. So if we super, uh, we superpose uh, the the uh, do a superposition of the two uh, graphs together, we would find a point of intersection uh, between uh, the load and the uh, the motor. So the point on which the motor will rotate the load at a constant speed at steady state is this point x where the speed will be the steady speed steady state speed over here and the steady speed uh, steady state top over here so what we are looking at uh, is basically um is basically the dynamic interaction between your motor and your load so let's say when you start your uh, motor uh, at the lower speed, uh, the characteristic of a motor, it has a high torque at lower speed. So if you have a high torque at lower speed, what happens is that the torque that you are supplying by the motor is much higher than the torque that is uh, demanded by the load. Therefore, you have uh, an oversupply of torque. So what happens is the motor will accelerate. So we know that acceleration, uh, uh, because we know that acceleration is due to a certain torque. If you have positive torque, then you will accelerate. So basically, F equals to MA. Uh, so if you have force, uh, then you will accelerate. So if we have uh, an, an additional or surplus of torque, which is a rotational force, uh, therefore you will accelerate. So what happens as you switch on the motor, the motor will increase in speed, increase, increase, increase. All this area, so if I can uh, highlight the area, so in all this area, what happens is you have a, a surplus of torque, right? So therefore, if you have a surplus of torque, you will basically accelerate. So you will accelerate until a certain speed where the top of the machine will match the top of the load. So it is basically at this point X where the top of the machine will match the top of the load. So when the top of the machine will uh, match the top of the load, then you will have no surplus of torque. So you are in steady state where uh, where where you, the, the the surplus of torque becomes zero. So the question that you might ask is, what happens if suddenly uh, the top uh, the load torque is increased? For example, if someone touch the blade, the fan, then the torque is increased. Uh, the the resistive torque will be increased. So there is when the resistive torque will be increased, what happens is basically the the curve will uh, move to a higher point. So imagine if suddenly there is a resistance in the blade so the torque increase in this manner uh, it's not very clear yellow so increase to this point so if suddenly uh, the top from this characteristic graph move to this uh, graph over here the torque increase what will happen is basically the uh, we, we can see that 
at the speed over here, uh, the torque of the motor is smaller than the torque of the load. Therefore, we have a negative torque. When we have negative torque, basically, we are braking the motor. So when you are braking the motor, basically, the speed of the motor will decrease. So we will move back into a certain speed where the top of the motor will match basically the top uh, of the load. So here is, is the new point of the uh, operating point where you will have the top of the motor matching the top of the, of the load. So when we are in steady state and we have a load, when we want to find basically the operating point or the speed and the top in which the motor will operate, basically what we do is we match uh, the uh, we superimpose uh, the uh, the characteristic uh, of the load and the characteristic top speed characteristic of the motor. So when we are choosing a motor, when you have to choose a motor for an application, you need to, uh, as you mentioned, first and foremost, understand the level of top. So for example, if you imagine now it is not a fan, but it is an electric vehicle, you want it to uh, operate at the speed of, let's say, uh, at a speed of uh, let's say 2000 rpm so at 2000 rpm you need to know what are the different level of torque that you need to operate the machine for example if it is accelerating it might be over here but if it is not accelerating at steady state the load characteristic might be lower over here so you need to have your machine uh, that can cross uh, the characteristic uh, of the the characteristic top speed curve of the load if your the characteristic curve of your machine is smaller than uh, the the load, then it will operate at lower speed, which might be the point that you uh, you don't want uh, you you uh, which might be the point that is uh, smaller than the operating point that you wish for. Okay. We know from uh, previous discussion that the speed basically uh, is depending on the voltage you supply to the to the armature of the motor, right? So as we supply uh, different uh, voltages, the speed will increase. And in the area of the top speed characteristic of the motor, we can see that there is po uh, different possibility of having uh, different uh, top uh, and speed. So for example, over here in this line over here, we can see that <clears throat> at, at a certain voltage, let's say uh, this speed over here at no load. So here uh, at the bottom at X axis is basically the operating point when your machine is at no load, right? So no load means the top is zero. So you are at the bottom over here. So uh, imagine that we are at rated voltage of 500 volt of the machine that we have discussed previously. So we are at this point. But as we have load, what happened is that our operating point will increase and increase until uh, this point over here. So what does it mean is basically we will have multiple lines of operating lines uh, that is depending on the voltage first one and depending of the on the load so what we can draw is basically depending on the voltage we would have a different operating speed and then if we change the level of load or the resistive top what will happen is basically we will see that uh, the operating point will move upwards like this right it's just like what we have observed over here at no load we have a certain point as but as the load increase uh, the the graph uh, basically uh, move there is a line of operating point that increase so these lines we may find this line that explain basically the the operating point at different voltage that give us a different speed and then uh, these moving lines to the uh, to the uh, top is basically the moving line as the load top increase. So let's uh, take an example of our previous machine. So our previous machine has a, a rated voltage of 500 volt. So the full uh, load speed, uh, how do we calculate the full load speed? The full load speed is basically when we have, a we supply it with 500 volt when, and when the current is basically at its maximum rated current. So if we refer back uh, to the uh, exercise that we had last time with the 500 volt uh, machine, the rated uh, the rated current of that machine was at 20 amps. So, uh, if you want to calculate the full load speed, uh, we we know that a voltage supply supply is 500 volt. E is the back EMF due to the rotational speed. So the rotational speed is what we are going to find. 
what we want to find. Uh, and IR, so uh, I is the rated current, which is 20 amps, and R is the resistance of the armature winding, which was a uh, 1 ohm. So if we do calculation, we'll end up with E equals to 480 volts. Okay, E equal to 480 volts. So at full load, at full load, when we supply the machine with 500 volt at the armature voltage, the back EMF of the armature will be equals to 480 volt. It's not 500 volt because it is loaded. So there is a difference of 20 volt due to the uh, the resistance of the winding and the current, the resistance of the winding multiplied by the current that is circulating inside the armature armature winding. So what do we do with this back EMF? We know that there is the equation, the relation between uh, back EMF and the speed, which is the EMF constant or speed constant K. Uh, from previous calculation, we know that it, we the, the constant is basically, we have the constant equals to 480 volt per 1000 RPM. Therefore, we can calculate the speed when we have that BMF, back EMF of 480 volt. So if we have 480 volt of back EMF, that means we have a speed of 1000 RPM. Therefore, what does it conclude? It concludes that at 500 volt, so if we are supplying 500 volt and we are at the maximum uh, top, maximum current of 20 amps, the machine will rotate at 1000 RPM. The machine will rotate at 1000 RPM from this calculation. So uh, if we look at the observation, uh, so please refer back to the question that we have treated last time, last week. If we refer to the question, question give us basically a no load speed a no load speed at 500 volt was 1040 rpm but now what we found is that the speed is 1000 rpm so there is a drop of uh, rpm the drop of speed by 20 rpm is a very small drop but nonetheless there is a drop of speed of 20 rpm uh, in comparison to the no load so what happened is at no load over here the speed was was 1000 rpm but as we increase the load until the top is at the current of 20 amps, we will observe that the speed is now reduced by 40 RPM to 1000, 1000 RPM. So uh, what will happen is basically at different voltages, uh, such as shown in this figure, you can always calculate basically, so this is for example, uh, the line of the speed variation uh, when the voltage supply is, uh, is at a certain voltage, uh, at 500 volt, right? So this is the line for 500 volt. So 500 volt, the maximum speed at no load at the bottom, you got it equals to 1040. But as the load increase, the torque increase until the level of torque of 20 amps, the speed is dropped into 1000 RPM. And here is the line, if you're supplying the armature with uh, with a different voltage, here is for 250 volt, here is for 125 volt, and so on and so forth. Right? So, at a, sub, uh, at a specific supply of voltage, uh, depending on the load, basically, there is a slight variation of, of the speed uh, as the load increase to, to its maximum value. Okay, so another thing that would be interesting to check is basically we may check the power balance. So, if you look at the power consume, if you are using the maximum voltage of 500 volt and the maximum current of 20 amps, we get the power consume electrically uh, in the input of 10 kilowatts and the power losses in resistance is Ri square so R is 1 ohm I was 20 amps right so it was 20 amps the current drawn at maximum 20 square multiplied by 1 we get a 400 watt and then therefore the mechanical power so if, if Ri square is the uh, power losses Vi is the power input Ei the product of the back EMF that produce the rotation of the machine Multiplied by the current, it is the mechanical output power. So 480 volt multiplied by 20 amps, you will get 9,600 watt. So we'll see that the losses plus the mechanical power will be equal to the total power total power consumed. So what we conclu can conclude is that if we have a load, so we are always in steady state. If we have a load and we are rotating at steady state, what happens is that that load will make us draw a certain amount of current. Therefore, the current will be translated into losses uh, consumed by the resistance and only a portion, so it's a, the larger portion, uh, and only a portion that's consumed by the resistance and the other portion is basically uh, uh, transformed or converted into mechanical uh, power, mechanical energy in rotation. So, this is due to the 
difference of V and E, uh, V was 500 volt, but E now is 420 volt. Where does the 20 uh, volt uh, uh, of the balance uh, losses? It basically losses inside the inside the resistor. So that is steady state with load. There is another interesting point. Uh, what we can look at is that basically that the the DC machine can also operate as generator. The load that we're looking at just now was the load uh, when we have a what we call as positive load, right? But we might also have negative load. What do we mean by negative load? So imagine that uh, instead of applying a resistive load, so here we have uh, an example of a drawing of a machine, right? So uh, previously what we did was we were supplying current and we're supplying top to the uh, to the load. But now what happened if the load is rotating, for example, faster than uh, the machine? Therefore, we are not supplying top to the load, but it's the load that is supplying top to the machine. So what will happen is that instead of applying resistive load, we supply top in opposite direction to increase the speed of the motor. So we are now rotating. Uh, just now what happened is the machine supplying top to the load, but now the load is rotating faster. Therefore, it is, supply, it is supplying top to the, to, the, uh, to the machine. So that we call it as sometimes as negative load or we are receiving top from the from the outside from the shaft so what will happen is basically uh, now that uh, your armature is turning faster your back emf will be larger than your uh, v will be larger than your voltage so if your back emf is larger than your voltage because usually what happen we should in, in no load we should have v equals to e but with load there is a certain consumption by resistance, therefore we should have V larger than E. But what happens if we turn the rotor faster, the armature faster, then we have a back EMF that is larger than V. If we have the voltage over here of back EMF larger than supply voltage, then what will happen we, if, is that we will have a reverse current. Uh, so now that we have more power in the shaft, in the armature compared to the power supply. So we will have current circulating from the armature going back to the power supply. Okay, so that is what we call as operating mode in uh, in uh, uh, operating in a mode of generator. So current will flow back from the armature to the power supply. So let's have a look at uh, an example to illustrate this uh, properly. Uh, let's take our previous machine of 500 volt a Baldor machine. So to drive the current in opposite direction, how how do we uh, when uh, when does this occur? So what we are like to do now is basically to try to identify. When does this mode uh, of generator happen? What we need to do? Uh, what is the speed necessary to turn the machine into generator? So now the machine is still supplied with 500 volt. It is rotating. But what could we do? What is the speed that we need uh, to rotate the shaft in order to uh, reverse the current or make the, uh, make the uh, back EMF higher than V? So the condition that we need to have is basically if the uh, the current is on the other direction, then our KVL, our equation will be uh, also different. Instead of E equals to V minus IR, now our E equals to IR uh, plus V, so or V plus IR, voltage and IR now are in the same direction, right? So in order to attain this uh, condition, we need to have basically our E equals to 520 volts. So uh, the current just now at maximum a rate of 20 amps and then it is, the machine is still rotating and then we were supplying 500 volts. Uh, so at minimum, we need our E to be equals to 520 volts because if E equals to 520 volts, then we are equals to the uh, IR plus the voltage supply. So now, what we need to do is uh, we know what is the level of voltage that we need in the armature of back EMF. What is therefore the speed that that uh, that give us this uh, back EMF voltage? So in order to generate this 520 volt of back EMF voltage, what we do is basically we use the EMF or speed constant K to calculate the speed. We know the voltage, the back EMF. What we need to do is calculate the speed. So uh, the speed. The minimum speed of the generator that we need is equals to 520 volt of EMF multiplied by uh, the, the inverse of KE because we know that 
uh, E equals to Ke multiplied by omega. Therefore, omega is E over Ke. So, E 530 volt divided by Ke. So, Ke, uh, Ke divided by Ke. So, Ke is basically uh, uh, 499.2 divided by uh, 1040. So, this comes from your previous calculation. So, we get the, no, uh, the minimum the minimum speed of the rotor that we need is 1083 rpm or revolution or rotation per minute so at minimum if the machine was supplied with 500 volt right uh, if the machine was supplied with 500 volt if we want the machine to become generator we need the shaft to be rotating so the rotation is of course induced by the load uh, need to be at least at minimum equals to 1083 uh, revolution per minute. So how is this possible? So imagine this is a motor inside your uh, electric vehicle. So now you are supplying the machine with a voltage of 500 volt and the uh, rotor is rotating. So imagine instead of moving, cruising in a flat surface, you are now descending a hill, descending a slope. When you are descending a slope, what will happen is that uh, your rotor will rotate faster than the speed uh, that was supplied by the voltage V. So that is when uh, you could obtain this minimal speed of 1083. So if the slope induced a rotational speed that is higher than 180, uh, 1083 RPM, then your machine will become generator and will it will regenerate or supply current, uh, reach or recharge your power supply in the case of electric vehicle, then uh, that is the, the battery pack. So that's what we call as regenerative braking uh, in, uh, in EV. So looking at our uh, top speed characteristic curve that we have just now, uh, where does this operation uh, situated? So this operation is situated when basically you have a current that is negative because it is in the other direction. So if you uh, continue the plot of the graph on uh, to the to the negative side of the top so basically the negative side of the top is that is the curve when it is operating in uh, in generator generator mode so you may find basically trace directly the curve so if you trace the curve basically uh, direct uh, continue the curve like this what you'll see is that the speed is increased uh, so this is the speed of no load if you increase the speed towards this direction then what you have uh, what you have is basically negative uh, torque or negative current therefore uh, functioning uh, the machine is functioning as as generator uh, there is uh, another thing that is interesting to look at we could summarize the steady state uh, in terms of a few expression so in steady state uh, we if we look at the expression or the equation that we have previously the three main equation the relation between torque and current relation between back EMF and the speed and then the relation or inside the circuit electrical circuit of our armature we can basically uh, deduce uh, uh, combine the equation into one equation that explain uh, the behavior of a machine in steady state so imagine if so now at steady state what will happen is that the voltage uh, uh, what will happen is that the voltage uh, that we have over here is our supply voltage and the load that we are looking at over here, uh, so the T, the torque will be the load torque, okay? And then uh, in steady state, we know that the current is constant. So uh, this part will be neglected as usual. Current over here will be constant. There will, no, there will be no acceleration, current is constant. And when we have no acceleration, it means the torque equals to load, load torque. So we consider I is constant and T over here is TL, the torque of the load. So if you look at, at this equation, let's imagine if you want to find an equation that relate the speed with the voltage and the uh, electrical parameters of the machine. So if you look at this equation over here, so this K are the same K, it is basically the same K. So omega is equals to E over K, right? And if we bring it into this equation, so E over K, if we put E over K over here, E over K will become omega, therefore we could include omega in the electrical circuit equation. So what we will do to the equation is basically we divide everything with uh, K. So we will have V over K equals to E over K which is omega. So now we include omega in the electrical equation plus IR over K. So if you look at the equation, what is I over K? 
i over k is basically so if you write i over k it is basically uh, t over k square so we bring k over here we have t over k we have t over k square so if we do the calculation you will end up with this equation over here at the end uh, assembled together we have the speed of the machine in steady state will be equals to the voltage supplied divided by the constant k minus the resistance of the amateur winding divided by k square multiplied by the load top tn multiplied by the load top tn so this equation is a unified equation that explain uh, the behavior of a machine uh, electromechanically so you have the electrical uh, parameters r and v uh, we have the mechanical parameter of omega we have the constant of k and then mechanical parameters of load top right so this equation could be used basically to uh, explain the behavior of the machine in steady state relating electrical and mechanical parameters so what is interesting to look at is basically the speed depends on two portion of equation the first equation v over k is basically uh, v over k is a voltage divided by the coefficient of speed right so this is basically uh, explaining that the no load speed is proportional to the supply voltage so if you have no uh, if you have no load what will happen is tl becomes zero right so this portion of equation will be zero so omega will be equals to v over k so the speed will be proportional to v which is also e in that matter in that case so this first portion basically uh, explain the condition that is voltage proportional to speed but when you have load what will happen is that is you have to deduct a certain portion of the, uh, the speed will be reduced by r over k square tl so this explains basically the drop in speed due to the load so if you have a load there will be a drop of speed minus r over k square tl and the drop of speed is proportional to r over k square so it's proportional to r over over k square Uh, the last thing that we could look, we may look at is basically in terms of uh, region of operation. Until now, what we have been dis discussing is in the region what we call as constant top region. So all this region that we have been explaining over here, a slight deduction of speed as the as the load top increase. This is the region what we call as a uh, uh, constant top region. Uh, so this it is the region over here in the operating point of a machine uh, and then uh, why do we call it as constant top region it is basically uh, because uh, at any point in here we could uh, request for a constant top and the machine will be capable to uh, supply uh, uh, that constant constant top right and we know from our relation of top with current and uh, back emf with speed uh, we know that the equation is basically the thing that we uh, neglected previously because we consider that the flux field, uh, the field flux is constant, but they are basically depending on on the uh, on the field flux p, right? So uh, the torque and the speed can be also be changed if we change the flux over here. So uh, we call the region uh, if we change the flux as uh, this region over here what we call as uh, as the flux weakening uh, flux weakening region so here you have basically the maximum speed at point c you have no load uh, but at maximum speed so maximum speed is basically due to the maximum voltage you, uh, you supply for example in the case of our previous machine it is uh, 500 volts so 500 volt will give you the maximum uh, what we call maximum base speed and if you supply it with 20 amps you will attain uh, basically the level of a uh, here point a is basically when you have a uh, zero speed but uh, maximum torque this point a but if you're supplying with 20 amps and 500 volt you'll find yourself in this operating point of point b so point b is basically the point what we call as the point of maximum uh, maximum power this is the point of maximum power where you are supplying the maximum torque maximum current therefore and maximum speed uh, which is supplied by maximum voltage so if so we can see that there is this uh, this uh, line where we cannot go beyond this speed because the speed has attained uh, the maximum voltage so this line is basically equal to this line over here uh, it is not totally vertical uh, 
there is a slight, a slightly, uh, there is a slight slope due to the variation of speed as you increase in top, but it is more or less. If we neglect the variation, then it is more or less uh, vertical, right? So, in the, in this case, what happens if we want to go to a higher speed? We may go into higher speed by doing what we call as flux weakening. So what do we do is basically it is possible to extend the speed range by decreasing the field flux. So we can decrease the field flux phi. If we decrease the field flux phi, what happened that is the top, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, if we decrease the flux field, then we can increase basically the speed over here. Uh, because we always have the same, we are now increasing the speed. So we are talking about this equation over here, equation relating the voltage of back EMF and speed. If you are decreasing the field flux, then we may increase uh, the, the speed at a constant voltage. So that's what we do to be in, to be in this area of flux weakening. We have to note that usually what happens is the top could be maintained constant. So this line over here is what we call the line of maximum power. Uh, as we increase in speed, uh, of course, because the power uh, has a certain maximum, you cannot you cannot increase the power anymore. If you increase the speed, what will happen is that you will sacrifice in terms of torque. The torque will reduce, so that's why we get uh, this curvature uh, of constant power over here. If you increase in speed the, by, by weakening the flux, the torque will reduce. So it is understandable, it's comprehensible because imagine the field flux. If we are reducing the field flux, then uh, what will happen is that the interaction between the armature and the field flux will be reduced. Therefore, the torque will be reduced. But of course, the torque is reduced, but the speed could go could go uh, higher. Uh, we can see that the speed can go quite high, but usually we limit the speed. We limit the speed due to uh, mechanical structure reason. Uh, we may theoretically, for example, reduce the flux to zero. If we reduce the flux to zero, then we have infinite speed. But of course, that won't be possible because we need uh, at least the field flux so that the amateur can interact with it to produce a certain force, a certain torque. Uh, but the speed usually is limited, not due to that, it is limited uh, much lower. It's limited to a certain point uh, due to mechanical, mechanical structure reason. Why? Because oh, it, when you start rotating very quickly, you have the centrifugal force. And when you have a centrifugal force inside your armature, what happens is that your, your armature winding will be basically accelerating toward the external surface and it may damage your rotor structure. So that's what we call flux weakening. Uh, by diminishing uh, diminishing the flux or reducing the flux so that we can increase in increase in speed now that we have completed the have completed the discussion on uh, steady state behavior where we have all our parameters of the machines electrical and mechanical as a constant either in load or no load for example we have all our uh, input uh, amateur voltage a constant we have uh, the load as constant either at no load where the load is zero or at a loaded where the load is uh, constant at a certain value therefore drawing a certain level of current at constant value now we can discuss uh, uh, another uh, behavior when the machine is used in what we call as transient behavior so transient behavior is basically the behavior where uh, we would have a, a certain parameters of the machines electromechanically uh, are not constant or there are changes and variation in those parameters. So uh, in, in changing uh, those parameters, there is especially uh, one uh, phase or one stages of uh, operation where it is very important to, to look into and understand what is happening. Uh, it is during the starting of the machine or the acceleration of machine. Uh, so the starting of the machine, what will happen is that we will observe a certain uh, current surges. Uh, current surges mean there is a peak of current when we start the machine. So what, what, what's happening there? Uh, in steady state, uh, we know that the amateur current depends on difference of supplied voltage and the back EMFE, right? So uh, in steady state, uh, what happened is that uh, we don't have this LDI over DT, of course, but uh, the, uh, the amateur current I, so the product of IR here, depending on the difference of V and E. So basically what happened is if you are supplying a certain voltage but the rotational speed is not up to that voltages therefore there's a, a, when compared e and v we have a smaller e than v uh, 
then what happen is basically the, the machine will pull a, set, a certain value of current uh, IR okay so at no load we know that uh, I is close to zero therefore we have V equals to E but at load we know that uh, we will not attain uh, the level of E that's equivalent to V therefore there's a certain current uh, that uh, exists in this part of the equation therefore the machine is drawing a certain current if there are variation in load which is the case of transient behavior uh, what happened is uh, this IR product will be uh, more prominent will become increased so what's happening is that uh, imagine we are in steady state all right with a certain load so we have V uh, supply voltage we have E which is uh, smaller than V and we have IR Okay, the product of IR. So uh, if uh, during that steady state, uh, suddenly, for example, uh, the load is increased. So the load is increased, meaning uh, imagine the case of, for example, our fan just now. If the fan uh, blade is basically retained by a certain force from the exterior, external forces, what will happen is that basically the characteristic of the load will be increased. Uh, so what will happen is that when the characteristic of the load will increase, uh, the speed uh, is decreasing. Right? So if something is rotating, you are holding the rotation, so the, the speed will decrease. And what happens when the speed is decreased? We know that speed is proportional to E, therefore we have a reduced E, we reduce the back EMF. So when we reduce the back EMF in this particular equation, so remember we, we do not take into account LDI over DT. Uh, it's very small portion of the LDI over DT is basic, basically very small because the value of L is usually is very small in comparison to the value of R. Okay, uh, L is in uh, inductance is in milli Henry, where the is R is in a few ohms. So it could be, for example, in the case of our machine of ex example of our machine just now is one ohm in comparison to uh, a milli ohm of inductance. So back to the uh, discussion. Uh, when we hold the machine, uh, when we we increase the lot to uh, top uh, the top of the load, I'm sorry. Uh, what will happen is E decreasing because the speed decreases. Therefore, the current will rise. Right, the current will rise. Uh, if I may uh, uh, note what happened over here, so we are neglecting LDI over DT. If uh, the speed uh, we add uh, the a certain uh, lo uh, load top what will happen is e will decrease so v is maintained constant right so it's your supply voltage if e de is decreasing to maintain this uh, to maintain the equation at a constant v what will happen is that uh, the product of ir need to be increased therefore what we have we are observing is basically what we call a surge of current a surge of current so if there is uh, transient behavior where we have uh, we we have a variation of the uh, load torque or resistive torque what will happen is we will experience a surge of current okay and this is uh, this is uh, very very uh, this need to be paid attention uh, closely because the current uh, when we have a, a lot of current uh, it might uh, basically uh, it might lead to a certain uh, damage to, to the machine, okay? The current search needs to be limited because uh, it might damage uh, uh, basically uh, two uh, most important part of our machine. The first one is the winding insulation because if you increase the current, what will happen is that your the conductor of your winding have a rated value of current. So the rating uh, value of current is depending on basically the insulation of your, of your conductor uh there is a certain value of current is that is not to uh you you cannot go beyond it because if you go beyond it basically what will happen is that you will have too much uh heat because we know that there is a uh, uh, the joule losses or electrical losses inside the mach machine that is proportional to r i square right so if you you have an increased i then r i square will be uh, quadratically uh the square of it uh, becomes the square of it it will be uh, increase a lot more therefore what will happen is that your winding could be uh, hit uh, could uh, experience a certain uh, thermal stress uh, the temperature could increase uh, very rapidly therefore damaging the insulation
The second component is basically the power electronics, your switches or, or your transistors and thyristor, uh, thyristors in the power electronic converter or your what we call simply as motor driver. So in motor driver, all the components, for example, the transistors, uh, the switches, is basically rated for a certain current to go through it. So if the current is too much, uh, is too high in comparison to the rated current for the transistors, then you will burn basically your motor driver. Okay. So it is. Uh, this is particularly true. The the search of current is particularly true uh, when uh, during the the phase of starting the machine. Uh, so what happens is that usually it is unacceptable uh, to start a motor a machine directly by supplying the motor with its rated voltage. So let's see what happened during uh, the starting of a machine. So uh, let's take uh, in consideration the example of our previous machine over here where we have a, a rated voltage of 500 volt. Okay. So at standstill, what happened is if we look into our equation, at standstill, you have no rotational speed. Therefore, you have no back EMF. So your equation is basically just V equals to IR. So EMF is uh, uh, null, is zero. You have just V equals to IR. So if you put directly, uh, if we switch the machine directly with its rated voltage, so it means that you switch on the machine directly with five equals to 500, V equals to 500 volt. With E being zero, what happens is that 500 volt will be equals to all the current uh, will be basically equal to uh, the IR product. So we can find I, the current at the starting phase, so the I, the current I at the starting phase will become I equals to V over R. We, we only have this part of IR because it's now, as I mentioned, E equals to zero. Therefore, we find that the current, for example, for the, uh, the example of machine where we have uh, the rated voltage of 500 volt, if we switch on directly on 500 volt, all that 500 volt is basically being consumed by the one ohm uh, resistor. So 500 divided by one, we will experience basically a surge of current of 500 amps. We have a surge of current of 500 amps. So that 500 amps basically in comparison to the rated current of the machine, which was at uh, 20 amps, we have a current surge that is 25 times bigger than the rated current. So when we have 25 times bigger than the rated current, basically this is uh, not acceptable. It's too much uh, for the winding insulation and especially too much for the uh, especially too much for the power electric or motor driver circuit. Uh, so what is the solution? So there is a certain solution uh, with regard to the surge current that is 25 uh, times bigger than the rated current. The solution is basically to limit the starting voltage. You cannot switch on your machine, your DC machine directly using the rated voltage. Uh, so for example, if the rated voltage is 20 amp, we need to make sure that during starting in this equation I equals V over R, we need to make sure that the current is limited to 20 amps. So in order to make this current equals to 20 amps, so the voltage at the starting voltage V start, uh, we know that it needs to be equals to the resistor multiply the current rated. We don't want the current to surge to 25. For example, if you want the current to maintain or to stay at the rated current, then the voltage of starting needs to be equals to a 1 ohm multiplied by 20 volt, which is the 420 volt. So if you want to start your machine and you want the current to maintain to be maintained in the rated current, you need to start your machine at 20 volt. And then later, once the machine is started, of course, at 20 volt, the machine will only rotate uh, after a certain time. It will, the, the, so the speed will increase, right? Uh, but the speed uh, will not reach its rated speed yet. Uh, the speed is lower so the voltage later can be ramped up you can increase the voltage gradually 20 volt by 20 volt uh, you can uh, ramp up or increase the voltage gradually while maintaining the current at its rated value okay so the consequence is the acceleration will be slower in comparison to uh, if you put 500 volt directly what happens is the acceleration will be very very rapid you will try so basically the, the value of e in your equation you will try to go from zero to close to uh, 500 volt uh, very, very quickly. Uh, for example, in the case uh, of our uh, example just now, we'll go from zero to 480 volt at steady speed loaded uh, very, very quickly. Uh, so the acceleration is very rapid, basically. Uh, 
but if we limit the starting voltage at 20 volt and maintaining the voltage at a certain value to keep the rated current at 20 amps, therefore the acceleration will be slower. The acceleration will be slower, but it will be much safer and you will keep your motor for a longer time. So the, uh, the duration, uh, the life duration of your motor will be longer because it will not experience uh, the thermal stress of having the current uh, too high inside the machine. So in real application in industry, what happened is basically uh, you, of course, you will not start the, your machine manually uh, by starting with 20 volt and then ramping up the voltage a little by little. What we have is basically we have a closed control loop, uh, so a, a control uh, algorithm uh, integrated into the motor driver. We have a closed loop current limiter. So basically, there is a measurement on the speed and the measurement on current into the feedback of the control of the machine. If the controller sees that the current goes beyond the limit current, the maximum current, then you will limit the current uh, in, the, uh, in the machine. Okay. So here in this example, we, what we try to do was that we, is that we, we try to limit uh, the current at its rated value. But when you, well, later when you have the opportunity to look into a data sheet of uh, an electrical machine of DC machine. Basically, the rated current is the current during a steady state. So it, the rated current is basically the current for a maximum load at a steady state. So when you have a resistive, uh, resistive torque or load torque uh, in steady state, you could the machine could uh, basically bear a, a current of 20 amps. But during starting, so because starting is basically you starting is a transient behavior, it's not a continuous or steady state behavior. So the machine usually can accept or can tolerate uh, a certain amount of a higher current, but only for a short duration of transient uh, transient duration. So usually a machine could accept up to, for example, uh, probably two to five times the rated current. So for example, if the rate, the rated current is 20 is 20 amps at starting the machine could possibly uh, uh, basically it is it could be acceptable to have a current surge up to uh, twice to five times so for example uh, twice means up to 40 amps or five times up to 100 amps uh, 100 amps of of the uh, of the uh, of the rated current so it might go uh, to 40 amps or 100 amps of a uh, starting current but only for a short moment while the machine is accelerating after that few fraction of second we will have to go back to the rated current or lower current uh, so that the machine will not be will not be damaged so in transient phase basically uh, there is two parameters that can uh, vary uh, can change uh, is either the voltage can change uh, so you change voltage from one value to a higher value to increase your speed or it is also basically the same as a changing torque so the torque uh, is at a certain value and suddenly it increased therefore your current need to be increased to retain uh, to be reta to retain the machine in steady state right so the machine enters uh, this transient state when you have one of these parameters either the voltage supply to armature to the armature or the load torque uh, change so this change basically is not permanent, it's only transient. And the change, uh, we will observe uh, a certain variation uh, of uh, voltage and torque, therefore also current uh, for a certain moment before the machine goes back into steady state. So the transient period of uh, all these parameters can be characterized by a first order exponential response. So what is a first order exponential response? It's basically the form of graph that we can see over here, where we have a certain uh, variation increase or decrease and then it decays into a steady state after a certain while so this e kind of equation a first order exponential equation uh, that ha you have uh, most probably seen already in uh, automatic control in control system or in vibration it is basically a response that is characterized by an exponential equation exponential uh, uh, exponential equation so it's a first order exponential response so what's happening here, if you look at this graph, this graph basically characterizes uh, the change of uh, voltage. So imagine if we have your armature voltage at a certain level, V1, then suddenly what you want to do is you want to increase the speed of your machine. Therefore, you increase the voltage inside your armature from V1 to V2. Uh, 
So by consequence, what we what we can observe is basically, of course, the speed will change, will increase. So from a certain speed, uh, the steady speed, uh, uh, speed one, the speed will gradually increase. Uh, so this is the transient phase, gradually increase into uh, another steady uh, steady state speed, which is higher than the, the initial speed. And what will happen is that we will also observe in terms of current, as there is acceleration in order to increase the speed, what we will see is that uh, we know that when we have acceleration, then the motor will draw a current, we will observe a certain surge of current, there will be an instantaneous increase of current as the voltage is increased, but later when the machine tends to go towards a steady, a new steady state uh, speed, the current will decrease also gradually into a steady state, steady state current. So by increasing V1 from V2, there, there is a change of current and speed, and the increase of current can be uh, can be uh, can be estimated using this equation. So I, uh, the variation, so the, the characteristic of uh, change of current over here can be modeled by uh, V2 minus V1. So the, the the new voltage minus the initial voltage V1 divided by R uh, exponential minus T over tau. So exponential minus T over tau, tau is basically what we call as the electromechanical time constant. So it is basically the duration that it takes for the current and for the speed to reach the new steady state. So the time that it takes for the current and the speed of the machine to reach a new steady state. So uh, what is uh, tau, uh, the time constant? The time constant can be computed or calculated by this formula, which is R multiplied by J divided by K square. So what is R? R is the electrical resistance of your armature winding. J is the load, uh, the initial load, uh, the initial of the load. So initial basically uh, depends on the load and there is the initial of the machine itself. So your your machine, the rotor of your machine have a certain weight and it has a certain diameter of rotor. Therefore, it has a certain initial. So initial in unit of kilogram meter square, right? If you add more load, more load into your shaft, then the initial is increased. So initial basically explain uh, the, uh, the 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 I mean uh, the time that it takes in order to to increase the speed. More initial you have on your shaft, or more weight you have on your shaft, then it will be it will be harder to accelerate. So the acceleration will be much slower. If you have j is smaller, then you it will be much faster to accelerate. Divided by k square, k square k is basically the uh, our constant, our electromechanical constant. Of relation between speed and uh, back MF or the relation between torque and, and current. So what we can see from this tau basically if we have a small resistance uh, of uh, winding then tau will be small therefore the, uh, the, the variation of current the current will decrease rapidly into steady state but if we have R is a uh, higher R then the current will uh, takes a lot of time to decrease into a steady state value. As for J, I've explained just now, if we have a higher load uh, or therefore higher initial, then it will be uh, much uh, longer for the machine to attain its new steady state speed. So that's all about the transient uh, state, uh, transient behavior that we need to understand. There are two most important parts. The first one is the current surge. You should be able to estimate the value of current surge that you have when you start your machine and know the solution that uh, we need to uh, basically apply in order to limit that, that, that current surge and we have to know that the, the intransient therefore we have only uh, a limited time of current surge we may uh, we may allow the machine to operate at a current higher than the rated current but only for a fraction of seconds uh, but certainly not 25 times uh, the value of rated current for example to up to two or five times uh, the rated current and then in transient behavior another thing that we uh, we also uh, need to know is that uh, in transient it takes certain times uh, transient does does not uh, uh, basically uh, the duration of transient is as its name say is transient it only uh, it only takes uh, a certain limited amount of time in a certain time range and that times is depending on tau so the variation of voltage, uh, the variation of current and speed, the variation of current and speed, depending on uh, the time that it takes for the current and speed to go back to steady state, depend on tau, which is proportional to Rj over k square.
okay so uh, in order to test our understanding on the machine i would strongly suggest for you to do this exercise on your own so we are still using the same uh, machine uh, that we have seen uh, last week so we have uh, several questions where the question uh, asks us basically to calculate what we have demonstrated previously calculate the search current if you start the machine by applying directly the rated voltage uh, what is the solution to reduce the current search that we have, you have found in question number one and then finally uh, the question is uh, when if we consider that motor with load with a load attached result in a total inertia so it's given the total inertia of 200 uh, milli kilogram uh, meter square and it's operating at voltage supplied at 250 volts so imagine the machine is operating at 250 volt in steady state uh, the inertia is this value and then suddenly if we change the supply voltage from 250 volt to 300 volt how long does it take to reach steady state so how long does it take to reach a new steady state so this question basically asks you to calculate the time constant uh, the time constant tau so that's all for uh, the, uh, the 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 lecture for this week so we have seen uh, two parts the first part is basically steady state but loaded when the machine is loaded and second part is uh, two important points that we have to uh, understand in transient state which is current surge and uh, and the uh, time constant tau so i'll see you next week for the third part uh, of uh, so the third part lecture on dc motor which is basically the driver and the control of dc motor thank you very much